Matariki is the Māori name for the star cluster Pleiades, also known as the Seven Sisters. Matariki is also the name for an international network of seven universities that are distinguished by their historic traditions and unique approach to facing contemporary challenges. The Matariki Lecture Series offers a short programme of lectures addressing current research themes or areas of common interest. This time, the lecture series is on race, racism and decolonisation. With a specific focus on practical impacts of racism on everyday living. Thank you. Can you all hear me? Yes. Okay, I I hope that I, I'm gonna check the watch here to see that I also will not, will not do with the, the, the time too much. Uh, anyway, thank you for inviting me. I'd like to take the, the, um, the t opportunity to share a definition of racism as a technology that I'm working on. Uh, that is, um, and of course, technology here is the key concept. And to me, that signifies all the material and immaterial methods, procedures, organizations, knowledges, ideas, tools, skills, and mindsets involved in the process of production. Or to use the definition of Ursula Franklin, technology is the way things are done around here. End of quote. Accordingly, Racism is not an abstract problem, but may be defined um, as a technology, as a racism as a technology firstly classifies people in distinct kinds that could be called varieties if you want to speak with Carl Linnaeus, or races, cultures, peoples, ethnicities, each bestowed with an assumed inherited essence and positioned between the poles of worthy and unworthy life. Secondly, racism as a technology produces the people that belongs to a certain place and also therefore has the right to feel at home and whose well-being shall be protected at the, ex at the expense of those excluded um, from the people who may be killed or left to die to secure the welfare of valuable life. Thirdly, racism as technology achieves and maintains, and I think this is key, an unequal distribution of status, privileges, opportunities, and death to people on the basis of the classificatory kind they are presumed to belong to. Racism as a technology furthermore situates people according to the logic that every kind should be in its proper place and lastly naturalizes the established order of power and guards the identities, borders and flows that the technology creates and privileges. And I will walk you through each of these constitutive elements of, of racism. So bear with me. So firstly, um, racism, and I think it, it's important to recognize that racism is not a universal phenomenon that has always existed everywhere, but it has a history and it changes across time and space. It's important to remember that Racism is not dependent on the uh, concept of biological race, as racism predates biology and genetics with many centuries. The first racial order to emerge in Europe was established during the Spanish Reconquista in the late 15th century, when Jews and Muslims were expelled or forcibly converted to Christianity and their hairs relegated to a secondary status as distinct races uh, of impure blood. In the course of history, racism has thereafter been legitimized with reference to philology, law, natural history, zoology, phrenology, anthropology, and ethnology. 
The concept of race was eventually biologized in the late 19th, early 20th century, only to be phased out again as both uh, scientifically and ethically unsound in the aftermath of the Second World War, after which the idea of inherited essence was embedded in alternative concepts, including ethnicity, culture, and religion. As Malcolm X used to say, racism is like Cadillac. They bring out a new model every year. Racism as a technology produces the people who is said to belong to a certain place. And I will illustrate this and lots of my other points here now with the case study of Sweden, where uh, in which Sweden here is typically construed as a culturally, religiously, ethnically, and linguistically homogeneous nation of white, blonde, and blue-eyed people who speak Swedish in their homes. Until recently, when hordes of non-white, non-Luther, and non-Swedish-speaking aliens began crossing the borders to undermine the social harmony of the good old days. Now, and I think this is very important to understand, this imagined Sweden only exists in nationalist discourse that calls Swedish homogeneity into existence by declaring it lost. The politicized nostalgic projections of Swedish homogeneity back in an imagined past, involves a violent erasure of all Jewish, Roma, Finnish, Tornadalian, and indigenous army people from Swedish history. It was only, after all, in the year 2000 that official uh, government in Sweden, the state, recognized that we in fact had national uh, minorities, as the language put it, uh, living in Sweden even before Sweden became Sweden. This, of course, also would erase everyone with migrant background, and that symbolically points to the violence the project of re-establishing a cultural homogeneity would necessitate if ever tried in practice. I don't know if you heard it, but Swedish uh, democracy celebrates mu uh, with much public uh, publicity in Sweden its centennial anniversary this year. A celebration that symbolically repeats the exclusion of the Roma community that only were given equal rights to housing, schooling, and voting in the 1960s, after the Roma civil rights movements. So Swedish democracy and American democracy is about of equal age. Swedish court historians may, see, uh, may seek to obscure this fact by typically pointing out that no, 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 the Roma people were not excluded from Swedish democracy because they were Roma, but because uh, they were not registered as citizens, which they couldn't be because they were Roma and not Swedes. Now, these days, that history repeats itself as Roma people from Romania and Bulgaria are denied the same right of residence as every other kind of EU citizen. Again, not officially due to the fact that they are Roma but because they don't have sufficient means to support themselves, because they are not allowed to work, because they don't have the rights to residence. Uh, <clears throat> and in fact, the Roma people is the only category of EU citizens that are caught in this catch-22 of racialized bureaucracy. And I think, and you might correct me if I'm wrong, that this same thing applies to Germany and most other European countries where the Roma people constitutes the largest uh, minority of. 
<coughs> police records in Sweden show that regulations such as bans against sitting down for more than two hours, occupying a space of more than 60 square centimeters, and camping in the woods are put into effect <coughs> only when the violator happens to be Roma. In a study we did, the, we calculated the costs involved for evicting Roma people from all their, their uh, informal settlements each time they try to stay somewhere. And it was 10 times higher than what it would have involved, uh, the cost that would have been involved in building housing that had allowed the Roma to pay their ways by working and studying and live a life of dignity. We did a, um, racism also achieves and maintains an unequal distribution of status, privileges, opportunities, and death to people depending on the classificatory kind they are presumed to belong to. And this is shown over and over and over again. We recently did a quantitative study of anti-black racism and discrimination in the Swedish labor market that was based on the total population of the workforce in Sweden. That is every resident between 19 and 65 years of age, roughly 6 million people. And it showed that black Swedes had less, uh, have less, uh, less access to the labor market less yearly gross uh, income, substantially less um, disposable income, less possibilities to do a high status career or acquire a managerial position compared to the rest of the population. After taking educational attainment, regional sectorial factors into account. Interestingly, uh, the study showed that Afro-Swedes are less likely to get hired if they have a post-secondary education of three years or more. And this is unique for Afro-Swedes. Every other category of Swede, Swedish citizen, if they are unemployed, they start to study, they get more merits and they get hired. That doesn't apply to black Swedes. This graph shows that it's 10 times less likely that a Swede would have a black boss than a boss from the rest of the population. Moreover, in the unlikely event that a black person attain a managerial position, he or she will earn around 75% of what a person from the rest of the population would earn if he or she had a similar, similar position and education. Like in, in uh, what I thought, uh, saw from the German presentation here, COVID also reveals the fact that racism is, uh, can be seen as an unequal distribution of death because, and I tried to show that in, in the picture here, this is from Stockholm region, uh, places with excess of death, exactly matches places and areas and spaces where uh, non-Swedish residents predominantly live. So this takes us to the two final parts of the definition. Racism as a technology situates people according to the logic that every kind should be in its proper place and naturalizes the power structure that has been created and guards the borders and flows that the technology creates and privileges. Now, in Swedish society, the shift towards neoliberal policies has for the past 25 years gradually undermined the once famous Swedish model. The growth of income inequality in Sweden is the largest among all the OECD countries. 2018 Statistics Sweden reported the greatest gap between the countries rich and poor since the measurement began. During the same time, Sweden transformed to the most segregated society in all of Europe. The basis of segregation, of course, is class. 
but as class distinctions co-varies with structural discrimination on the basis of racialized ethnicity, religion, and culture, class distinctions increasingly have acquired a visual dimension in the segregated urban areas of the rich and poor. Studies of urban inequalities shows a similar pattern across Swedish, uh, all the major Swedish cities where separated and stigmatized areas for low income re residents um, have been increasingly racialized. This picture shows Gothenburg, second, uh, the second largest city in Sweden on the West Coast, uh, where research showed that there is a nine year difference in re life expectancy between a a uh, black man born and raised in Bergen, one of these stigmatized underclass areas, and a uh, man born and raised in Longedrag, a predominantly white upper class area. Same city, same year, same transportation system. The tram number 11 transport people between Bergen and Longedrag, but nine years difference in life expectancy. This, by the way, shows that Sweden has become a reflection of the racialized global uh, inequal, uh, unequal distribution of wealth, resources, and possibilities to live a, a good and long life. A Swede born and raised in an underclass area, such as Bergen, will live as long as a man born and raised in Vietnam, whereas a rich, where people born and raised in a rich suburb would live as long as a man born and raised in Monaco. <clears throat> of course, uh, racism, um, structural racism is not the only part of racism that is violent. Um, we also have a lot of subjective violence, a lot of racist violence in Sweden. Um, in a study I made in 2018 that covered every mosque and Islamic association with prayer hall facilities in Sweden, showed that a whopping 59%, six out of 10 of all mosques in Sweden have been exposed to physical assault ranging from vandalism to arson. Pictures here in the background of the grass show burning mosques in the cities of Malmö, Borås, Eskilstuna, Stockholm, and Örebro. And finally, uh, last, last slide and minute, um, the processes of naturalization of the racist order of things also involves stigmatizing critical studies of racism by labeling them ideological and political. Whereas of course, it's a uh, fact of the facts on the ground shows that it's the other way around. Those who claim that Sweden is beyond race, racism does not exist in Sweden, except in the mindset of the intolerant few, uh, have, cannot substantiate the claim. It's an ideological uh, claim that racism does not exist or do, do not constitute a severe problem uh, in Swedish society. Anyway, we have seen a process in Sweden similar to uh, the process that goes on in Denmark, France, the Netherlands, Belgium, Austria, Poland, Hungary, Turkey, the United States, uh, that tries to uh, ban or defund critical theory, gender studies, post-colonial studies, decolonial studies, uh, critical race studies. And to me, this is of great uh, concern. And I would like to close by uh, urging us all to defend academic freedom. Producing critical knowledge is not only a right, but a responsibility, and thank you.